Hi, this is Kobe Duckworth, Senior Product Support Specialist for the Center of Expertise for Cascade Microtech. Today we will talk about the installation and tilt adjustment for the Universal Probe Card Holder on the CM300 Flexible Auto Prober. Here is the Universal Probe Card Holder. The two outer rails are used to mount the holder within the platen insert. Each rail has three M4 screws used to secure the rail in place against the platen reference surface. Each outer rail also contains two planarization set screws used for tilt adjustment. There are two fully adjustable inner rails used to hold the probe card at the center of the platen opening. Each inner rail is secured to the probe card holder with two thumb screws located at each end of the rail. A critical feature designed into the universal probe card holder is its ability to accommodate cards with a range of different probe depths. By adjusting a pair of vertical standoffs incorporated into the rail, the user can raise or lower the reference surface of each rail. Repositioning the standoff will cause it to rest on one of a series of steps designed into the plate of the probe card holder. Taking a closer look at the rail, you can see the different standoff set points in half millimeter increments from 0 to 2 millimeters. And here is a closer look at the half millimeter steps milled into the bottom surface of the adjustable standoff. By loosening the retaining screw, the standoff may be adjusted to one of five half millimeter height settings. Slide the assembly to the desired height position, then lightly secure the retaining screw to temporarily set the position. Once the standoffs at both ends of the rail have been adjusted to the desired height, place the rail back onto the probe card holder plate and check for even seating. Then tighten the retaining screws for both standoffs and then once again secure the rail into place using the two thumb screws. Before installing the probe card holder into the platen insert, be sure to back out the planarity adjustment set screws so they do not engage with the reference surface of the platen insert. So it's easier to see, here I have an example outer rail. At each end of the rail, there is a set screw used for adjusting tilt. Back out both of these screws so that they do not extend from the lower surface of the rail. Here I'm double checking that the set screws are fully backed out and then I insert the probe card holder into the platen insert opening. I then engage the M4 screws at all six locations before tightening them to proper torque. The goal here is to develop a process that gives you the highest repeatability for removal and insertion of the probe card holder. To do this, I am introducing the use of a torque driver set to six inch pounds and recommending the use of a standard torque sequence that will be used every time the probe card holder is installed. This will help to minimize tilt variation across installations. The recommended torque sequence is center right, center left, front right, back left, back right, and finally front left. On a busy test floor, these torque drivers will disappear, but I don't recommend skipping this step. If you operate in a mode where you are often switching between probes on positioners and probe card test applications, consistency of the installation process of the probe card holder is absolutely necessary. We are now ready to install our probe card of choice. To begin, I loosen the thumb screws for the inner rail clamping assembly and ensure the clamps are retracted to allow the probe card to seat properly on the reference surface. I then remove the tip protector from the probe card and inspect the underside of the probe card for damage or debris. If good, I place the probe card onto the inner rail reference surfaces. Before fully releasing the card, make sure both sides of the card rest properly on the reference surfaces. If necessary, loosen the inner rail attachment thumb screws and correct the rail spacing. 
Here we adjust the rail width, but do not fully tighten the probe card clamps. We may need to slide the card forward or backwards to center the probe array within the contact view camera window. For demonstration, I intentionally placed this card to the rear of the opening to show that an adjustment was necessary. The probe tip array should be horizontally centered in the window. It must also be located in the top one-third of the camera view to prevent travel fence violations that protect against hardware collisions. This card is too low and the rails must be adjusted to accommodate. Originally, the rails were adjusted with a zero standoff setting. To accommodate this card, however, I had to raise the standoff to the full 2 mm. With this setting, you can see the probe array is perfectly aligned within the contact view window. With the outer rails fully secured against the platen reference surface, adjust the set screws to the point of first contact with the platen reference. Therefore, any future adjustments will be made from a known adjustment datum. Being careful to identify the true point of contact, Spin each set screw to the bottom of free travel, but do not tighten. On this assembly, one screw appears to have some debris in the threads, making it difficult to spin freely. This will also make it difficult to find the true point of contact. You may need to remove the probe card holder and clear the debris. So let's review. The probe card holder has been installed into the platen opening. The outer rails are secured to the platen with a torque of 6 inch pounds. The inner rails have been adjusted to the appropriate height and adjusted for the width of our card. The probe card has been installed, centered in the contact view window, and secured into place. And lastly, we set the starting position of the planarity adjustment set screws. To assess the tilt of the probe card holder, we installed a probe card with a known good probe array tilt and then contacted a bare aluminum wafer to assess the uniformity of our scrub marks. Using this technique, we have determined that the probe card holder planarity needs to be adjusted. To begin, loosen all six screws securing the outer rails to the platen. During our scrub mark based planarity check, we found the probe marks at the top of the array to be light, indicating that the bottom of the probe card needs to be raised. Working in pairs, adjust the right and left bottom set screws in small, equal amounts. Keep in mind, this was designed as a four point planarity adjustment system, so working in adjustment pairs is critical. Also note that the chosen set screw incorporates coarse threads and a flat mating surface instead of a point contact. This minimizes the adjustment resolution for each turn, therefore even small adjustments will make a huge impact on tilt. Once we have torqued the screws in place, we have now finished a planarity adjustment of the Universal Probe Card Holder. Once planarity is adjusted, you should be able to remove and later reinstall the Probe Card Holder without having to adjust the planarity screws. When removing the probe card holder, be careful to avoid contact with the planarity set screws. They are not locked in place and vibration or contact may change your planarity settings. Once an adjustment is made, verify the planarity is correct by analyzing scrub marks on a non-critical wafer and fine tune the planarity by repeating this process. Be sure to follow these guidelines. For fast and safe planarity adjustment, always adjust in a direction that lifts the probe card holder off the platen surface. Be careful on short probe depth cards to make sure the tips are still visible in the contact view window. Remember to make adjustments in pairs. Always adjust two planarity set screws at a time in equal amounts. And as always, use a torque driver and follow a standard torque sequence after every adjustment. Once again, my name is Kobe Duckworth. I want to thank you for watching.